Hi, my name is Julia Silke and I am a data scientist and software engineer at Posit. And it's been a while since I have made a video here and that is because over the past um, year plus I have been working on a new project called Positron. Positron is a new next generation data science IDE. It's currently in public beta and today I'm gonna show you a little bit about um, how to use Positron for data analysis. Uh, with using this week's Tidy Tuesday data set on uh, encounters with killer whales, or orca encounters. Um, there's a really uh, great package that um, makes this data available and I'm excited to dig into it. And I'm also excited to show you a little bit about where Positron is right now. There's still a lot for us to do to get Positron um, ready for um, everyone's different workflows, but um, if you're curious, I can give you a little glimpse today. All right, so if you haven't seen it, this is Positron. I'm really excited to show you a little bit about it. Um, the first thing I want to maybe highlight is, is how you can control the layout. So if you go up here to the top right, there diff there's lots of different ways you can um, customize the layout, but I especially think you might be interested in these presets. So this top one stacked layout is most similar to the RStudio default if you're coming from RStudio. I'm a big fan of the side-by-side -side layout where I have more space um, for my source editor, whether that's a .r file or here like a Quarto file, and um, my console over on the right so I can see both at the same time. And then, you know, my panes where I might see my variables or my plots or whatnot are down, um, down below. So this is what I prefer, uh, but you can customize it a ton. The other thing I want to highlight for you here is that... Um, uh, the command palette is really important for uh, in Positron. So you pull it up with control or with control or command shift P. So here's command shift P, and you can you know there's there just a ton like a ton of access to different things you need to do up here. So let's for example um this this little sort of outline ish thing here that just gives you a view, visual overview is called the mini map. I'm not going to be working with a very big file today so I'm just gonna turn the mini whoops I'm gonna turn the mini map off like this because then um, I can you know get a little more get a little more space here um, so definitely be aware of the command palette and get used to using it more so I'm gonna I just uh, started a new uh, this uh, a new chunk here I'm gonna run this code so you can either click the button here um, or you can go in here and do um, command shift enter which will um, send your code to the console to run it so I'm gonna lo uh, load the orcas package from um, this week's tidy Tuesday and I am going to load the main data set here Let's see the tidy data set and then I am going to the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at my data so I'm going to use view here view and what it is going to do it's going to pop up for me a um, uh, what we call a data explorer so first I am going to um, let me get rid of that. So this gives you a grid view of the data that's in here. We've got summary stuff here. We've got um, you know information on the observers. Um, there uh, is a begin time and an end time, and there is a um, there's also information about where there's like a. a um, uh, text description of the location and then there's le uh, latitude and longitude here. So now this is a summary panel that tells me um, um, some summary information and I can click down to see for example here these here's the year right I get a little histogram if I scroll down to the um, the latitude and longitude right like here's the beginning latitude here's the end latitude look pretty look pretty similar there and then um, if the data explorer doesn't know what to do with a certain um, type of data it just doesn't give you anything here although it still gives you like uh, how how much missing data there is. So these times are um, 
the begin time and end time are a are there a there the type is HMS. It's a it's a time object. So it's not numeric, it's not a date time, it's just time by itself. And the data explorer doesn't know what to do with that, so it just tells you, gives you what information it can. All right, so that's just a little bit about our data here. So now let's say, um, you know, we can, like what kind of thing might I want to do? So let's say I want to, you know, I'm interested in the location of these encounters. So, you know, I can do something like count up that text description to see what's going on there. I can, you know, pipe that to the, the viewer again if I want um, and get you know a little view of that that uh, summarized data set. Um, let's go into that more slightly more complicated uh, more detailed latitude and longitude data. So let me say um, let's think about let's think about that um, let's think about that that beginning and end time here. So this tells you, gives you a view of everything you have uh, created in your session. And so let's think about this beginning time and end time here. Let us, um, let's compute an interval here. So I am going to make a new, a new, a new column. Let me call it encounter interval. It's kind of long, but Oh well. Um, and I'm going to use a function from, it's from Lubridate. It's called interval here. So um, I'm going to bring up, you can see there was some hover help that I could use if I was just kind of wanting a quick glance and to move on. But I want to really read the, the help uh, here and I want to I'm going to create one of these interval objects and once I have an interval I can do lots of stuff with it like compute its length and all that kind of thing so let me uh, compute the interval and it tells me oh I need to do the start and then the end so I'm going to say the begin time and then the end and oh my goodness end time like this like so Okay, so I have this new thing, encounter interval, which is an interval here, and then I can use um, uh, int length, like I just saw in the um, in the help to compute the length of it, and now it's a numeric value. And so now, if I were to view this, this new thing down here is an encounter, this encounter interval that I made is, um, is a numeric value, a histogram. I can now plot it, compute on it, all the kinds of things I might want to do. Wow, look at this though. This is pretty strange. What is a negative, what does a negative interval mean here? There's, there's quite, there's quite a lot of them actually that are negative intervals here. So let's see, six and 12 and 19. So let's, let's, um, let me look at six, 12. Okay, so here's six, six, here's 12. Okay, so it looks like what is happening is these are times that are not in 24 hour, not on a 24 hour clock but like on a 12 clock and we are this data does not keep track of what is a.m. and p.m. so here it's um uh, the it's called it's 1253 um and then going to 3 p.m. probably and 12 here same thing right it's going from a time to, to a time that if you were on like a 24 hour clock, you would call this 13, right? So that's, that is probably what all these negative, um, these negative durations are. And so this is an example of us being able to have a quick look at our data visually, helping us understand what we need to do. So what we need to do here is we need to somehow identify which of these are actually um, it basically all the encounters that go over noon, um, uh, we, we would need to fix them. We would need to fix them. Um, I think in the interest of time, I'm just going to filter them out here. Um, but it's an, it's a nice, ex this is a nice example of, uh, where our, 
where our um, uh, data explorer can help you decide what you want to what you want to um, what code you need to write to how to analyze what you need to do next. Okay, so let us let us. So we're going to say the beginning longitude on the x-axis, beginning latitude on the y-axis, longitude, latitude. I always have to think about that because my goodness, it is difficult to remember. And then let's put a point on this. And notice that my, oh, not duration. It's called encounter interval like this. Okay. Okay, that's better. I'm gonna, notice I get this little film strip where I can see all my plots. I'm gonna get rid of that one though because I made an error and I don't need to keep it anymore. Okay, so this we can kind of see whatever the shape of the land is, you know, around this, which is pretty cool. Um, I am going to use scale, I wanna use the Viridus color scale. So let's say scale, color, Viridus. I'm gonna do C, I think is the right one. There, nice. Um, there are some quite long encounters, so let me take the log of this to kind of see the the span out a little bit better. Nice. And notice that I can like switch back and forth to see these differences. And I also can, um, I can, you know, make it a different shape if I would like. Um, let me just do auto. And then I can also pop it out up here. If I want to look at it um, kind of in a bigger view, I can um, pop it up into this larger space to be able to take a look at um, what, what's going on, what's looking at. It looks to me like um, there's no strong relationship between where you might um, see uh, orca and how long your encounter is going to be. It looks, I don't see a big pattern there. So um, that's good. Okay, so let us, let's make one more plot here. So this, this plot was about how long the encounter is, but we have information on both the both the beginning and the end location. So let's maybe try to make a plot for that. So there, um, um, let's do that. So I'm going, those are on the same row. Like there's one row per beginning and end. So I think I could either tidy it and make it so there's two rows per encounter, but instead I think I will just, make a blank call to ggplot2, and then I'm gonna say geom point, and I'm gonna say begin longitude, and, no, no, sorry. <laughs> begin latitude, like so, and then I will do the same thing for the ending points. So I'm doing it separately because it is uh, I'm doing it separately because um, they are on the same rows. Like there's one row per encounter, not run one row per location. So that's why I'm doing it uh, two like this. All right, nice. Oh well, I got to distinguish between them. I could use shape. Um, let's use color. So the Midnight blue. Well, that's the color it already is, but um, let me say aquamarine. Aquamarine. Oh my gosh, that's hideous. Let me try this. Okay, that's better. All right, and again, I can pop it out and kind of take a look at what it is and see, you know, it looks to me like we see beginning and end of encounters pretty evenly distributed over um, this this whole area in this um in uh, the location where this data comes from. All right, so that was a little introduction to Positron and how you might use it when you're first starting out with exploratory data analysis with a new data set. Positron is currently in a public beta. Um, you can get installers for Positron on our GitHub page. Um, we're, I, I personally am really excited for everything that's to come with it. We know there are still rough edges, but if you are interested in trying out a new IDE, we would definitely appreciate feedback from you as you get started and experiment with it.